Hey, I'm back with some more information on these three relay boards, um, how I make them, um, how to put them together, how to install them. Basically, what I do is I use Easy EDA. Um, I've used it because it's the first one I found and it's easy to use, and that's why I'm using it. So basically, I've got my schematic here, which I made up, and I've got um, a few parts to this little relay board. It's quite simple, quite straightforward. Basically, there's, there's the 240 part here, which is just the step down from the AC voltage down to 5 volt DC. And after 5 volt DC, it comes down to a linear voltage regulator, which steps it down from 5 volts to 3.3 .3 to run the ESP module. The ESP-1001M um, um, module, uh, which as you saw in the previous video, sort of slots in through the, through the board and stands up. And that runs up to 3.3 volts and it's got all the GPIOs coming out of it. And then down here we've got the relay section and these relays run on the 5 volts out of the um, high link converter and they're controlled via transistors, um, NPN transistors just here. And yeah, that's it, that's the, the diagram. And then over here we've got GPIO 16, it's got a pull up because it doesn't have an internal pull up and 16 is used as an input. Uh, for switching and then last of all we just got the button here just for make, making it a bit easier to flash it when um, when you're setting it up so you make that up the, the schematic and you come across and you design up a little board and um, put all the traces together it's super simple to do it's pretty easy straightforward um, you just spend a bit of time laying it all out nice and neatly this particular board has got um, some cutouts just to reduce the chances of um, arcing or shorting um, if you have a look at the photo view, you can see you can see the cutouts a bit more clearly. And also, if you look at the um, actual board I've got here, you can see the cutouts. <laughs> um, so once you've finished and you've got it all sussed out, make sure there's no mistakes. Um, and you can just come up and you can exp export the um, Gerber file, and and you can go to whoever you want online and just get them made up. Um, I've got these panel. I panelized these ones. Um, which is done, if I can remember, uh, panelize, and it's a V-cut um, with zero spacing and two rows and two columns and it will look something like this once you've done it. So you have no spacing in between it and that's what you'll get, you'll get that. And of course, in your measurements, you have to allow for this cult, this border here. And this is measured so it's inside the 100 by 100, which is a prototype size board. So that's it. That's how you get the boards made up. Um, next, we'll go and have a look at soldering um, one together. I've got some that I've already pre-soldered, as I mentioned in the other video. But we'll just attach all the um, relays to it. And then we'll install it. Okay, so now we're going to solder that together and this is my extremely busy workbench where we're going to do it so we've got our module the ESP module we've got our circuit board pre-soldered on the back got three Omron relays that we're going to be using single pole single throw and we've got a 5 volt power supply and an MOV. So to start off with, we're going to uh, attach the Wi-Fi module, the ESP module. Now this is an ESP eight, uh, sorry, eight five eight two, and that one has um, flash memory built into it, so it doesn't have a separate memory chip, which means it's only got one megabyte of memory, which doesn't give much space for um, extra programming, but it's enough. There's enough to fit ESP home on it. So it's fine for what we're using it for. So we've got our um, soldering iron all ready to go, and we'll just attach these. We just tack it on one at each end, and then we'll just adjust it, make sure it's going the right angle.
So that's our ESP module attached. Next we'll tack this fuse on. This is a 4 amp fuse. And although we've got <coughs> three relays that are 10 amps each, it's very unlikely we'll be using that much power through this relay unit. So we only be like a couple of lights on four or five or six lights on each relay, which is hardly anything at all. So that's why I've opted for the, the smaller fuse, this four amp fuse here. I believe I calculated the trace, the PCB traces here. And there's some on the top as well, so they're running in parallel. I've calculated it to carry about six or seven amps, I believe. Next, we've got our relays. If the relay is attached, the only thing left to do is the power supply. To so attach these as well. So this is 0.75 mil. It's probably a little bit too awkward, big. 0.5 would be better, but it'll be fine. So now we just got to put these um, leads in. So we, this is our 240 volt input lead, and it is a 0.75 mil wire, um, stranded copper. And of course, the color coding in Australia, I'm not sure about other countries, is um, the line or active is brown, and the neutral wire is blue. And lastly, we've got the switch wires, and these are the feeds out of each relay. So that's all attached. Now I like to do it like this first so that I can plug it in and um, try it out before I install it in its final, final location. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can, if you're confident that it's all going to work okay, you can just um, cut that off and hardwire it straight in when you're ready to go. So now we're going to program this little relay unit. And basically I've got this um, FTDI adapter set up with the um, pins just like so. Got grounds, TX, RX and, and 3.3 volts. And I've got this of course set to 3.3 volts and not 5 volts. Um, simply just need to get it and have the pins in the right alignment. Um, which is like so. And plug it in here. Then all you have to do is... Um, before you power it up, you just make sure you're holding down the little flash, fl flash button. And then we can simply take this and plug it into the computer while we're holding down the button. And it will put it into flashing mode. But before we do that, we need to have it, um, it set up in um, ESP Home. So we're in ESP Home here on Home Assistant. And we just come down to the file that we're working on. And it's, it's this file just here, downstairs living room. To set this up, we of course have come up to here, we can click new node and we can enter the details. Um, for this relay unit, it's just a, a generic um, Sonoff or a generic ESP8266. Um, you enter your Wi-Fi and um, SSID and password and it creates a file for us. I've got this um, file here made up already and it's got all the extra details in here, Wi-Fi credentials, um, um, it's got the binary sensors for the four switches and the three relays set up as relay, as um, as relays um, with their relative names. 
So once you've got this set up here, um, we can simply make sure that you've got your Wi-Fi and um, details in here before you compile it, of course. Um, but then we can come over here and we can click Compile. Uh, ESP Home will compile it and then we can download it and we can we can flash it into um, flash it using ESP Home directly to our relay unit on the PC that, that we're using just here. Okay, can we, we open up ESP Home Flasher? Uh, we've got our relay plugged in and we had the button pressed whilst we we're giving power to it, so it's in flash mode. We can then select the COM port and we can select our firmware that we've downloaded. So this is the firmware file, the .bin file. And we can open that up and then we can hit flash ESP. So that's ESP Home Flasher. And it was available both on Windows and Mac. And that just flashes the program to our relay module. And of course, once that's flashed on there, um, any further updates we want to do, we can do over the air. So you don't have to have it fully set up, we just have to have the Wi-Fi credentials in there and um, and then you can add anything you want to to it later through the home ESP um, interface. So that's all done. We can unplug our relay and we can move on to the next section. So I've got my uh, three relay module just here and we're going to install it into the behind a switch plate. Okay, so I've got my three relay module just here. And we're about to install it in behind a switch plate in the, inside the wall. So basically we've got the um, our switch wires out, our three switch wires that su um, supply the various lights we're going to connect up. Um, this is the mains in. So it's the 240 volt um, AC mains that comes in, protected by the fuse and by this MOV just here. And uh, we have the 3D printer case that it just fits inside with some ventilation holes which align with the voltage linear voltage regulator on the back just here. So that gets some ventilation provided through through here to cook um, so it gets some convective cooling. So this just um, slots into here like so. And of course we've got the um, our switch wires, our low voltage switch wires that come out to our wall plate. So we've got, um, they're all pulled down. These are all pulled down. And three of them are internally, have internal pull-ups on them. And GPO 16 actually has an external pull-up connected because that doesn't have, a in, doesn't have an internal pull-up. So this um, lid just goes on like so. Like so. So that's an enclosure that goes in behind the switch plate. Now I've got another prototype that I've, I've had made up and I've been working on. So this is the first time I've really tried it out. It's multi-purpose. It basically has some uh, momentary switches in behind here that these buttons are connected to. And we've just got some 3D printed um, parts here. And it fits into a commercially available um, lighting switch plate. And on the back here, you'll see that I've just tapped in, so I've just connected into these momentary switches at various points on this on the PCB board. And um, like I said before, they're all pulled down um, switches. The idea behind this was sort of you could have this as a stone a standalone input device with a, a Wi-Fi module attached, and there's also the option of having some opto couplers here and having outputs to two relays. So I sort of designed it as just a multi-purpose experimental board. But today we're just going to use it as input only. And the benefit, of course, is it's nice and flat. So when you put this on the wall, it gives us extra space inside the wall box to fit everything in. So let's um, install this in our light switch box and then we can try it out. In our light today, we're going to have three lights connected to this, which are obviously controlled by the three relays, and the additional switch we'll be able to use as a scene button or be able to use it for anything really to do a scene or an automation. So we're just going to install our switch relay just here behind this switch panel. 
and then we're going to try it out in Home Assistant and see how it works. So we've obviously just got a standard Australian switch plate just here. And bear in mind that um, you should be appropriately qualified before you start working on your own house wiring. And it's not something you can do without being licensed in Australia. As far as the countries, I wouldn't know. So basically the process is quite simple. You can simply open up the switch plate. And these switch plates come in up to six switches. Um, when I wired this um, house, we, I put, made sure every switch has a neutral behind it. I would recommend that if you're doing a new house to make sure that all your switches have neutrals now because there's a lot of devices that uh, are installed in houses that need the neutral wire or it's easier if there is a neutral there. And um, I have got the power turned off. I know that it's off, but I'll just double check it with my bolt stick. And the power is definitely off. So that's our active feed just here. That's going to um, power our relay. Um, there's a, another wire here that goes up to the fan, which is actually not in use, this one here. So we don't, won't need that one at all. We'll just be able to put a connector on this one. These are the three switch wires that go out to our light switches. We've got our new panel just here, and we're using inline crimps to attach the wires. Probably in another version I'll get rid of the crimps because it's a little bit complicated to use. I thought it might be a bit easier but it didn't work out to be so. And we use the uh, crimping tool just to attach our switch wires onto here. And we attach our active feed, which I'm um, ready. And here's our neutral. And this is of course is running on 240 volt in Australia, 50 hertz. Um, a little bit different to America, but it's the same as Europe. And so these two cables here just need a, a connector just to seal them off because we won't be using them. So we've got our, those two sealed off. We've got our relay connected. And we can just move our switch wires up a bit to make some room for our relay. Now this is installed in a single brick wall. And it's got the, a plastic wall box in here. Um, so there is insulation between the inside of the um, switch box and the, and the wall. And, and when I installed these switch boxes, I purposely made sure that they're a little bit deeper in the wall than, um, than they sometimes would be. It makes it a little bit easier to fit everything in. Okay. And so the, obviously the beauty of having this um, particular panel here is that it um, has more space to fit in like that. Whereas a normal switch plate would normally take up a bit of space. Although there is still enough space to fit um, regular toggle switches in behind there if you wanted to use regular toggle switches. And this is a um, prototype, it's experimental, it's something that I'm working on. So it's obviously not a finished product yet. I'm going to try it out and see how it works. And more impo most importantly is that these, um, um, there's no risk of accidental contact because there's nothing here that exits the switch box. Um, so there's no risk of having accidental contact with something that people think is low voltage that has actually got mains voltage attached to it. So it is safe. 
as you'll probably notice, one of our one of the parts is black. It's because it's inter when I was designing this, I sort of made it interchangeable so that you can change the face colors. You can have different color surrounds or buttons. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could have them all white. So that's it, that's all installed. It's fixed in place, nice and straight. And we'll put our cover back on. And we can try it out. This is our new switch in, in action. So we've got the th um, three relays which are in behind um, the switch plate. And this one here controls our dining room light. Here's that one there. And this switch here controls our living room, which is that one there. And this switch here controls these lights here on the feature wall. And the, th and the last switch at the moment I've just got set up as a two-way for this hallway, which works like so. And of course we've got our um, um, on iPad here too and we can control all those switches with the iPad like so. The only one, one thing I also need to do was I found that the lights were sometimes turning on by themselves and so I used a 80 second 80 millisecond delay just to debounce these switches and that seems to have stopped that problem if you enjoyed the video um, please give us a thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos like this please subscribe thanks for watching